I recently switched to an Android phone and the one thing holding me back was the Apple Watch Ultra. But I think the Garmin Mark has just about won me over, except for a few key issues or areas, depending on how important they are to you. Now, the first thing to talk about here is the build quality and design of the Garmin Mark, because in some areas, it is just not a fair comparison to the Apple Watch and even the premium Apple Watch Ultra. Now, the Mark is Garmin's most expensive luxury fitness watch that they currently sell and costs over three times the cost of an Apple Watch Ultra. And for that price, we are definitely leaving like the realms of a like-for-like -like feature comparison with the Apple Watch Ultra because this is heading into the territory of something like a Rolex. And people don't spend you know, tens of thousands on a Rolex because they can reply to their wife's messages on them, do they? So what do you get for the price? Well, firstly, the casing is entirely made of fused carbon fiber with, I think it was 11 layers of carefully like layered and positioned carbon fiber. I'm told this is actually a bit of a technological feat because normally doing this would interfere with, you know, everything like Bluetooth and GPS reception. And they've achieved that and more. And other than the fact that it just looks freaking cool. The other huge benefit here is that the watch is noticeably lighter when compared with the Apple Watch Ultra. Now it's rated for 16 days battery life or six days with the always on display. Although you can stretch it to 21 days in this special low power mode and with an all new wireless and magnetic charger, which I much prefer over the plug-in type chargers that I've used on both the Epix and the Phoenix models. And you can pick up one of these in a few slightly different designs. Now I really, really love this model. I love the subtle green accents on both the casing and on the watch face. And you also get an AMOLED display, which Garmin have started including in their latest generation watches, moving away from the memory and pixel displays that typically last much longer on battery, but don't look as good and aren't as flexible as having a full AMOLED display. Now, in terms of the unboxing, this is definitely one of the nicest products I've ever unboxed. And given the price, it is nice to see that some thought has gone into just making the unboxing experience a little bit special. So once you have the watch unboxed and on your wrist, you typically go through and hook this up to your phone. Now, the first huge benefit of a Garmin is that this works cross-platform, so iOS, and Android via the Garmin Connect app, which is sort of what you get if the Apple Health and the Apple Watch app had a baby together. <laughs> it's kind of this place where you can set up your watch and all of its settings and preferences, but also where it collects all of the data. And I actually really, really like this. It presents all of your data nice and clearly, pulling in all of the steps and sleep, but also things like your training readiness, uh, calories, which you can integrate from apps like MyFitnessPal, along with any workouts you've done recently. Now, settings are all in there too, though I would say some of them can be buried inside of menus. I've actually found myself Googling just where to go to find out where I change certain things like the units of measurements. Some of them you change on the watch itself. Some of them are in the app. But once you do have the watch set up the way you like, there is just usually no reason to go back in and dig into the settings that often, if at all. So as someone who has worn an Apple Watch pretty much every day since the first generation Apple Watch came out, so other than taking it off to test other smartwatches, what's it been like to change to a Garmin? Honestly, it was really, really difficult to begin with. Now, the biggest one for me, I think, is the changing from a very responsive and very animated touchscreen to interacting with everything, primarily using the buttons on the Garmin. Now, you can use the touchscreen, but I just found myself gravitating towards using the buttons more naturally just because they're more reliable. Speaking of which, if you like to swim, they are really good because you can actually interact with the watch under the water because they're actual, you know, buttons rather than touchscreens, which just don't work underwater. Same as if you're in the shower, you can actually use the watch Watch, rather than having kind of these phantom touches that you get on the Apple Watch Ultra. And also if you tend to run or you know play sports with have like long sleeves that touch the, the watch screen, having physical buttons is so, so much better. The number of times that I've triggered something on my Apple Watch, like playing ice hockey or even running. I've also heard people with wet or like sweaty sleeves can accidentally like control the Apple Watch, sometimes even stopping the workout due to an accidental touch. Whereas the Garmin's reliance on buttons just makes for an overall much more like just reliable experience. Speaking of which, if you are wanting to improve your fitness, the Garmin really is the one to go for here. The Mark, the Epix, Phoenix, any of them really will do it. Now for the last say, couple of years or so, 
I've been going to the gym regularly, and right now I'm having a bit of a competition with my wife on which of us can uh, get a six pack first. So now I am really going on this uh, like bit of a health kick to lose that last bit of belly fat. Now Garmin actually has a coaching feature, not specifically for losing belly fat, but if you want to do something like say a, a 5K or a 10K run, well it will go and search for a five or 10K event near you, and it will actually train you so that by the time the actual you know real life event happens, you'll be ready to go. Now for some stupid reason, I decided to do a 5K park run just to kick things off. I think I just wanted to see how good and how quickly I could run it. And I ran it in something like 20, 26 minutes, 28 minutes, which for someone who hasn't run at all in years, isn't that bad, I don't think. But it did put me out of action for like most of the weekend. So I asked the Garmin coach on the watch or via the app on my phone to get me to run a 10K. And over the next few weeks, I'm still kind of going through it right now. It's been recommending when I rest, when I run, how I run. Sometimes it will do a five minute warm up, a 10 minute jog or a 10 minute run, and then like an optional 10 minutes. Other times it will do sprints where I do like 20 seconds on going as fast as I can and then 40 seconds off to recover, and then just repeat it eight times. And just by following the Garmin coach, I can I can just feel myself getting fitter. Now I've actually been trying to improve my VO2 max recently, which basically is the maximum rate that your body can use and exchange the oxygen that it's getting. Hey, how's it going? Enjoying the video? Now don't go away because this is the part of the video where I'm gonna tell you how you can win a brand new Pixel 8 Pro, Pixel Buds, and a Pixel Watch 2, whilst also telling you about the sponsor of this video, 1Password. Now, if you work across devices like Mac, PC, iPhone, Android, 1Password works across all of them. Now, I've been using a family account now for the last few years, and the number of times my wife forgets the password to her email account or Apple or Google logins, even her bank accounts. But with 1Password, I can store those passwords and share them with her so she won't forget them. And if you have a family account, you can add up to five people. So you, your partner, your kids, maybe even your parents, so you can look after their security too. We are seeing more and more data breaches every single week. There was what's been called the mother of all data breaches in January of 2024, where 26 billion records were leaked. And honestly, uh, at this stage, it is almost a 100% certainty that some of that leaked data is yours. Now, all you have to do is sign up to one password using one of my links down below. And that is literally it. You'll be in with a chance to win the bundle and you'll get 50% off a year subscription to a proper password manager. Like it costs less than one Starbucks every month. Then once we hit 1500 signups together with one password, we're gonna pick a winner and get in touch with you. Back to the video. So the higher your VO2 max is, the higher you can perform and for longer. That's what she said. And actually since switching from rowing, which I was doing, to running, I've definitely felt better. But just fundamentally, if fitness is a priority for you, then the Garmin and its features, the Garmin Coach, will be much, much better for you. Now you also get a heart monitor in the box for this model. So if you want to monitor your heart rate whilst you're playing a sport where you can't wear a watch, perhaps playing hockey or something like that, then you can still track your workouts using a heart monitor instead. I also find the Garmin is pretty much the watch of choice for well, really anyone who is really focused on their fitness. If you use something like Strava to record your workouts, you can see on there that most people on there are using Garmin's. I also see Casey Neistat. He always shares his uh, runs on Instagram, I think it is. And it's always a photo of his Garmin data that he shares. And also I got a set of Garmin scales at home so I can start weighing myself every few days. It also tracks my body fat percentage, which is important to me if I wanna win the six pack challenge with my wife. And all of that data gets fed into Garmin Connect Fit to assess and give you readings for how primed you are to work out or, or recommend a rest day instead. And I just love how all of this data is presented to you in this just easy to digest format. Now, one benefit of using the Garmin is also the battery life. It is nice to just not have to worry about charging the watch constantly. Now, I recently went to Barcelona, literally came back yesterday for an industry event, and I didn't even worry about packing a charger. I charged before we went, and I knew that I had about a week's worth of battery life left, whereas I did pack my Apple Watch Ultra Charger. I ended up not wearing it overnight, and actually it was on 35% by the end of day two. So you will be charging the Apple Watch Ultra more than twice as often as the Garmin. Now, the other big thing that I really appreciate with the Garmin is the way the watch and the app communicates. Now, previously when I switched iPhones, I've basically had to reset my Apple Watch and then like repair it, resync it to the new phones, 
which usually means I lose a ton of data and it also takes like half an hour or an hour to do. But with the Garmin, I've been able to switch phones, even switch between different models of watches and it's not skipped a beat. Now I actually forgot to move the watch when switching from the S24 Ultra to the S24 and it caught up after syncing to the new phone with all of the data that the watch had collected between syncing off my old phone and then connecting it to the new phone. And it took, like I said, like a couple of minutes instead of more like 10 to 20 to 30 whilst you wait for the Apple Watch to do its like, initial sync. There is also handy features like Jet Lag Advisor. It wasn't really that useful in Barcelona since it's only like an hour's time difference. But traveling to Las Vegas early this year with like a, like it's like a 10 hour time difference, it was really, really handy to see the watch tell me to stay up a little longer when I was already feeling pretty tired so that it would minimize jet lag and help me recover quickly. Now, in terms of accuracy, I wore both watches around Barcelona and both the Apple Watch Ultra and the Garmin were relatively close enough in terms of steps. Now, the Garmin does seem to log more right now. It is on 8,400 steps versus 7,700 steps on the Apple Watch Ultra, which isn't a huge difference, but it is still quite a big difference. Now, that could be because I maybe swing my left arm more than my right arm, or... But if you do care about tracking steps, then obviously the more steps you do, the wider the gap will be as the, you know, as the day goes on. Now, there are two areas that I want to highlight in terms of accuracy. Now, the first one isn't really anything to do with the watch, but using the Garmin scales to read my body fat percentage, it reads at around 19%, whereas my gym has one of those uh, machines where you kind of stand on the scales, you hold the handles, which reads me at more like 12%. Uh, but recently I went to a, like a proper medical facility to do an accurate 3D body scan along with some other tests. And that reading came out in the middle of, I think it was like, 15%. So neither of the uh, what I would call easily accessible machines, the Garmin scales and the gym scales were reading accurately. And then we come to the VO2 Max. Now I've been pretty disappointed in myself recently when I scroll back through my Apple health data to see that my VO2 Max was really quite high during COVID when we used to go for a run around the block with the kids like every other day or so. And since then, it has been slowly declining as I do less and less cardio and more weight training instead. Now I actually did the 5K park run because you need to do an outdoor run or an outdoor walk to get a VO2 max reading on more either of these watches. And I was so disappointed to see that I scored a VO2 max of 37, which according to the Garmin is low and basically in the red for like everything that needs improving. My Apple Watch also read the same too. So at least they both agreed on that my VO2 max was poor. But whilst at this like medical facility, I took a proper VO2 max test where you like, you run on a treadmill whilst breathing into a machine. So it takes like an accurate reading. And I scored a VO2 max of just over 50, which is actually really, really good for my age. Apparently it's not quite like elite, but it puts me in with like marathon runners and triathletes. So there was me thinking how bad I was doing based on the watches when I'm actually technically at like peak fitness. So I would say that if VO2 max is something you're fussed about, don't take a reading from your watch, go and get a proper test because these are not accurate as far as that's concerned. Now doing that test, I was also able to get custom heart rate zones for my, my zone two training and zone five training rather than using the automatically calculated ones on the watches. And interestingly, I was able to see at what pace my body burns like fat versus carbs. And for me, if I wanna like lose this belly fat and win the challenge thing, all I need to do is walk. Like literally, when I'm running, I am burning zero fats. It's all carbs. But when I walk the same distance, I am burning pure fat, no carbs. It is like this crazy shift in mindset when all you hear is that you need to walk more and do technically like less exercise. Okay, so in terms of other features now, just to make sure I don't miss anything here, you can download music from Spotify to the watch and run with like Bluetooth headphones connected directly to the watch. It is a little bit fiddly to sync, but again, once it's done, it's done and it works pretty well. And also Garmin Pay actually works pretty well other than it is limited in terms of which banks it works with. So if that's important to you, if you wanna be able to use, you know, the Garmin version of Apple Pay, then just make sure before you buy, just go and check that list and make sure it supports your card properly. It also does lock your card with a pin, which you have to use. I think it's like once every 24 hours, but you can just tap your pin code 
or use the buttons to enter the pin code. And like I said, once it's done, then you don't have to do it again for another, I think it's like 24 hours or so. Now, of course, there are some missing areas from the Garmin that you do get with an Apple Watch. Now, Siri is one of the first things I missed. Being able to just quickly speak to my watch to control things around the house or set myself a reminder without pulling my phone out. Also for the fitness buffs, gym kit was a notable shame to not have. You know, when you like jump on a treadmill, you can hold your either your Apple Watch or your Galaxy Watch to the NFC reader, and then it syncs all the machine's data to your watch and syncs your heart rate back to the machine for you know more accurate measurements. Now, in terms of the smart features, you can receive notifications on the Garmin watch, but you can't reply to them. So unlike on the Apple Watch or any other smartwatch really, where you can type out and you know reply to the messages, it's just not a feature on the Garmin. And there was also just one slightly mildly annoying thing, I guess I would say, with the notifications on the Garmin. If someone messages you, so you know, you glance at the watch to like read the notification, and then they send you another message and another, or, or maybe you're in a group chat where lots of people are messaging, the Garmin preview only shows you the very first message which was sent to you. You have to either like scroll or dismiss each message as it comes through, which when it's, um, you know, when it's a group message and you're trying to read the conversation as it's happening, as the messages are coming through, it is like very frustrating as, you know, the message keeps refreshing, starting you at the top and you have to keep scrolling again or canceling the messages out. So that can get super frustrating. Now, all of those features, I actually can forgive the Garmin. Like I've got used to not having Siri, Gym kit isn't a huge issue when you have all of these kind of other fitness data coming from the Garmin watch. And even the notifications thing, like not everybody wants to wear a phone on their wrist, but I do think the missing LTE on the watch is a big miss in my opinion. Like for a watch of this price with smart capabilities, particularly as a fitness watch where you want to go on a run maybe without carrying your phone with you, there are just no LTE features. You can't receive notifications, make or receive phone calls or message people without your phone. I imagine there's perhaps a limitation around, you know, battery life for this one. It's probably a surefire way to kill the battery in, you know, more like Apple Watch timescales. And also probably some hurdles to overcome with having this, you know, carbon fiber casing and the LTE signal, but still worth mentioning all the same. Now, one thing I will say that is quite frustrating with the Garmin over the Apple Watch is how long it can take to interact with it. Now, key point being, if you pause the workouts, you then have to wait a few seconds before you can then end the workouts. And then it has to like process things before you can like get to the next step. So if you wanna switch between doing two different sports or you know, activities, switching between running to swimming or whatever it might be, can be quite cumbersome and frustrating whilst you're sat there just waiting for it to happen. But to date, every single watch that I've used on an Android phone has been a real like significant barrier from me switching away from an iPhone to an Android phone. They are frustratingly slow. The interface just really sucks. I still can't comprehend how not one single Android kind of watch has managed to match the, like, the fluidity and the just use of the Apple Watch user interface. But for the first time since I can remember, the Garmin Mark actually is the first non-Apple Watch that is still a smartwatch technically, and the heavy focus on fitness is definitely something I'm happy to stick with, at least for now. Now don't forget to sign up for 1Password and enter to win a Pixel 8 Pro bundle. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.